The RCMP in Ottawa are giving an update into the investigation of one of their top intelligence officials. Camera Ortis had access to intelligence at the highest levels. There are also reports Ortis may have links to organized crime. Let's listen. He's been employed by the RCMP since 2007. Prior to his duties in the National Intelligence Co Coordination Centre, he held positions in Operations, Research and National Security Criminal Investigations Directorate. Mr. Ortiz has been charged for alleged criminal activity under the Criminal Code and the Security of Information Act. The news of his arrest has shaken many people throughout the RCMP, particularly in federal policing, as well as the broader domestic and international security and intelligence communities who worked with Mr. Ortiz. In 2018, the RCMP was supporting an FBI investigation and through the course of this file, the RCMP uncovered possible internal corruption. We took immediate action and launched an investigation into the alleged activities. Our focus has been to diligently pursue this investigation, which led to the arrest. By virtue of the position he held, Mr. Ortis had access to information the Canadian intelligence community possessed. He also had access to intelligence originating from our partners, both domestically and internationally. This level of access is appropriate given the position he held. As mentioned, this is an ongoing investigation and we are assessing the impacts of the alleged activities as more information becomes available. We are aware of the potential risk to operations of our partner agencies in Canada and abroad, and we are working in partnership to ensure mitigating strategies are in place. Once the RCMP became aware of the alleged activities, we worked with partners to take immediate steps to safeguard the information. Together, we are working to assess the level of impact to operations, if any. In the last week, cooperation and support amongst the security and intelligence community, as well as our law enforcement partners, has been absolutely remarkable. We thank them for their ongoing support. We recognize that these allegations, if proven true, are extremely unsettling. Canadians and our law enforcement partners can trust that our priority continues to be the integrity of our investigations and the safety and security of the public we serve. Before taking some of your questions, I want to emphasize that the alleged actions of Mr. Ortiz are by no means reflective of the important work carried out by employees of the RCMP. Regardless of rank or category of employee, on a daily basis. As Commissioner of the RCMP, I am mandated with the safety and security of Canadians, and I would not be able to achieve this mandate without the support and dedication of all we employ. Thank you. Hi, Commissioner. Mercedes Stevenson, Global News. I'm wondering if you could move the mic just slightly closer to you. Thank you. So we can get your audio a little bit clearer. Uh, you mentioned that in, in this particular case, the RCMP is acknowledging that Mr. I think it's Ortis, so we've heard it pronounced both ways. You can clarify that, that would be great. Uh, that, that he, in fact, did have access to allied intelligence. And I have multiple sources telling me allies are extremely concerned about this. Have any allied countries or organizations temporarily suspended, limited or restriction, restricted intelligence sharing with the RCMP and with Canada at this point? We haven't had any restrictions at this point. And again, it's early on in the investigation. Restrictions from the RCMP or restrictions from allies? Both. There hasn't been any restrictions. In terms of when the investigation started, can you give me a sense of the resources that were put into this when you first became aware that there was somebody inside the RCMP who had compromised information? We have put the maximum amount of resources on this investigation. We take it very seriously and there is uh, multiple avenues in this investigation. It's, a, it's, it's a, a big investigation so we put all hands on deck. Can you give me a ballpark on what the maximum would be? I, I don't even know, to be honest with you. It, it fluctuated throughout the investigation from when we started, when we were apprised of the information, seized the information. It was a group of investigators and it just grew from there for, for the different uh, investigative techniques that we were, were required to get us to the arrest of uh, Mr. Ortiz. A, a dozen, two dozen, six dozen? I don't have an exact number. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, Catherine Tunney, CBC. I think a lot of Canadians, a big question on their mind is why. There's been some reporting that suggests that um, he had a debt problem. Can you talk at all a bit, a bit about motive in this case? At this point in the investigation, I can't comment on the motive. Um, and encryption also seems to be a huge part of this case. Um, is the fact that he was using encrypted um, services, has that stalled your investigation at all? Uh, given the depth and breadth of this investigation, it's taken us several months to get to this point, um, and that's why uh, the arrest was only effect effective last week. Um, and I understand the case is ongoing, but obviously another big question is who he was talking to. Can you talk a bit about any sense of who the foreign entity or terrorist organization is? Again, given that it's a sensitive investigation, we can't share that information. Uh, Mackenzie Gray, CTV News. Uh, can you rule out that Mr. Ortiz acted alone, or is there any continuing investigation to determine if he had any help within the RCMP or any other national security agencies? At this point, uh, we have no indication of additional people, but obviously there'll be a lot of people that are witnesses and will be continuing the investigation, so at this point, no. It seems like Mr. Ortiz had a substantial amount of high-level information. Can you talk about the kind of information that he was able to obtain? No, sorry. At this point in the investigation, very sensitive and can't share that with you. Sorry. Micheline Laflamme de Radio-Canada. Radio-Canada. No. Is the cooperation from our allies threatened at this point? At this point, the cooperation with our allies is not at all compromised. At this point, there is no risk of being able to share information. Do you believe that this breach that was uh, committed by Mr. Ortiz could be in part the result of a lack of resources, uh, either financial resources or for some other reason? Well, we cannot control human actions. We can put all the processes in place and all the necessary policies in place, but we cannot uh, control all human behavior. I certainly can say that we can always use additional resources in the RCMP, but in this case, this is the act uh, of an individual, and we have to be sure in future that we have uh, all the necessary processes in place to ensure it doesn't recur. Hi, Stephen Chase, Globe and Mail. I have a question about another line of inquiry. It's about the line of inquiry into the SNC-Lavalin affair. I wanted to ask you, does the force uh, want the government to waive uh, full cabinet confidentiality for all witnesses so that it can continue its examination of the matter and whether there was obstruction of justice? Well, today we're here for the... Uh Mr. Ortiz, Ortiz investigation, so I don't want to comment very much, but we do take all investigations uh, very seriously and uh, investigate to the fullest. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but both of you work with Mr. Ortiz. What were your impressions of him? I have actually never met uh, Mr. Ortiz. Being new to the role since uh, June, I've bumped into him a couple of times, but other than casual discussion, that's about it. He's, uh... Okay, thank you. Jim Brownskill, the Canadian Press. Can you tell us a little bit more, Commissioner, about the FBI investigation and how the RCMP became aware of uh, this concern? Well, in cooperation with the FBI, we were working on an investigation in 2018. Uh, during that investigation, we came across uh, certain documents that uh, led us to believe that there might be some internal corruption. Uh, at that point, we uh, got the um, I want to say a sensitive and international investigations unit uh, to work on the case, uh, working through all the possible leads in that investigation, which led us to the arrest of Mr. Ortiz last Thursday. And of course, we're led to believe that uh, the Phantom Secure Company was at the heart of this, and that's the investigation the FBI probe we're talking about that the RCMP was also involved in. Yeah, I can't comment. It's, we aren't the lead in that investigation, so I'm, I'm unable to comment on that. You've talked about uh, bringing more civilians into the force uh, to make it more modern, more flexible. Does this incident give you any pause about plans for that? Absolutely not. It's not about the category of employee. It's about a uh, person's decision-making or 
or lack of, and uh, somebody, uh, it's an act that it doesn't matter the category of employee. Every employee in the RCMP is value added to our organization and a valued employee, so no, not at all. Bonjour, Geneviève Normand, Radio-Canada. Radio-Canada, I'd like to hear your comments on the reason why you decided to investigate Mr. Ortiz and at what point, well, you said there was an investigation with the FBI in 2018, but I'd like you to elaborate on the beginnings of that investigation. Well, when we investigated with the FBI, we discovered documents that prompted us to suspect that there could be a mole. When we discovered that information, a team was set up, and the nature of the information uh, prompted us to put in place a, a team to find out where the leak had come from. And as we moved uh, through the investigation, we realized that it was inside the organization. Steps were immediately taken at that point, and there were mitigating measures that were put in place uh, to minimize the risk. And today, how do you assess that risk? Well, we're continuing to assess it as we uh, deal with the information we've seized, and uh, we are keeping our international and domestic partners aware of all the developments. And one last uh, question, Commissioner. You said there were mitigating measures that were taken. Perhaps you could elaborate on that. What type of measures are we talking about? Well, given the sensitivity of those measures and the ongoing investigation, I cannot make any further comment. Uh, we'll go to the phone lines now. I don't know if the operator is online. On va aller aux questions ah. uh, des gens en ligne. Absolument. Alors, s'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 pour toute question. Veuillez, please, uh, press star 1 for the other question. La première question, the first question, is from Daniel Leblanc, Global Mail. Monsieur Leblanc, vous la parole. Please go ahead. Hello. Um, I'd like to know, um, so this, you know, the leak or the presence of a mole or a leak goes back to 2018. Uh, can you give us a sense as to whether or not uh, what happened internally to make sure that uh, information, classified information from Canada and its allies uh, was more secure, uh, or does did the mitigation measure only start after you've, you identified uh, the possibility that Mr. Ortiz was responsible uh, earlier this year? Our mitigation measures are, are dynamic, so we're always looking at improving the way we uh, deal with the integrity of secure information. We go to our partner agencies as well for best practices. Um, at the time when th the documents were discovered, it was uh, we had no information um, specifically as to if it led back to the RCMP or if it got through some other source. So it took some time to uh, look through the all the uh, go through the investigation to get to the point of the arrest of Mr. Ortiz. It gives us a bit of a sense that the Allies are understanding of the situation. They're fairly, they, you know, is, aren't they angry? Isn't there kind of something more going on than just people are understand that, you know, there are issues? I, you know, get a sense that, you know, our, our allies are not that concerned, whereas, you know, the breadth of the leak and the person, the access he had, um, gives a sense that this is a very worrying situation uh, for CSIS, for CSC, but also for international allies. Well, I would definitely imagine that there is concern amongst our Five Eyes community as well as uh, uh, within Canada, uh, but it's so early to tell what. Uh, the breadth and depth of this investigation. Uh, for right now, there's great support from those uh, communities, both in Canada and abroad. Um, and of course, we're concerned as well, but we, until we know what we're dealing with specifically, uh, our risk assessment is fluid and the uh, measure of severity of such an event is fluid as well and could change depending on what we find as the investigation furthers. Next question on the line. Merci. Thank you. If you have a question, please press star one. N'hésitez pas à appuyer sur étoile un pour toute question. Next question is from David Youngren from Reuters Canada. Please go ahead. Have you la parole? Yes, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, 
After the Delisle case, we know, because we heard it at a sentencing hearing, we know that Canada's allies basically put the country on caution and urged it to tighten up its security measures. Is there not concern in, in going down the road once the results of this uh, investigation are in that they're going to say, look, we don't trust you anymore? If I understand your question correctly, you're wondering if our partner agencies might lose trust in the, the RCMP. Um, there is always that possibility, but I am confident that the measures that we have in place will mitigate those such risks, uh, as well as any risk to um, uh, further events. And secondly, do you know when your investigation into the potential damage might be concluded? That I, I have no idea. Um, no, we, we can't uh, put a timeline to that right now as we're going through uh, some of the material that we see, so it'd be, uh, I'd be, I can't commit to a timeline to that. But uh, uh, having said that, we are keeping our key partners involved in discussions in a bi-weekly manner to reassure them of the progress, and uh, our folks are diligently working on, on getting to the end of this. Great, thank you. Do we have another question on the line? Operator, no other questions on the line? Yes, we do have a question from Paul Vieira from Wall Street Journal. And Boulet Parole, please go ahead. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Can you tell me, you said that... Sorry, we can't hear the question. Hello? Yep, Hello? Go ahead. That's you said better. you learned in 2018 through documents. What kind of documents? Was this um, a copy of an email? Was it memos? Was it uh, what, what kind of document was it? Uh, given the sensitivity of this investigation, unfortunately, I can't share the type of documents that were discovered. Okay. Can you? How was the document discovered? Uh, in collaboration, working with the FBI on uh, another investigation, the documents were discovered. Was it from a laptop? Sorry, the audio is bad. We couldn't hear that last question. Was it, on a was it from a laptop? Uh, again, I'm not at liberty to uh, share that information. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. We have no further questions. If you have to kiss your Mr. Brian, please go ahead. Thank you very much. I guess we can uh, take one more question from the room. I was wondering, hi, it's Catherine again. Um, there was, uh, seems to be a break between 2015 and 2018 on the charge sheet. Uh, did Mr. Ortiz go through any security check in, in between those two times? Uh, any individual in our organization with top secret clearance gets recertified every five years, and Mr. Ortiz was uh, had a valid security clearance. Would that include a polygraph? No. All right, thank you very much. This concludes our news conference. Ceci conclut notre conférence de presse. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you for your respectful questions. And uh, that is the uh, RCMP Commissioner, uh, Brenda Lucky, giving us an update. Uh, Evan Dyer has been listening along with me on uh, Cameron Ortis, the Director General of National Intelligence Coordination Center, so a top RCMP official, a, a civilian, uh, not uh, a a police officer per se, but uh, a clearly a top RCMP official facing a number of charges. Evan, what stood out for you in terms of uh, some of the questions and the answers uh, to the commissioner? Well, a number of things actually. One was that she talked about uh, there being a lot of conjecture out there, some erroneous information I believe she said in French as well. Uh, not clear what that's referring to because she then went on to give details about how the RCMP uh, became aware of this alleged uh, internal corruption and it sounds an awful lot like what has been quite widely reported uh, global initially reported the connection to vincent ramos this canadian um, entrepreneur who set up a company to sell encrypted blackberries to drug cartels and others these uncrackable phones that would allow criminal networks to communicate secretly uh, and it sounds a lot like that is the case that she's describing when she talks about the, this document that they became aware of as a result of an FBI investigation, making them wonder. Uh, and we know that from our own reporting too, we've seen uh, an assessment, a preliminary assessment of the damage that talks about Cameron Ortiz reaching out to Vincent Ramos, sending him an email offering intel uh, that he would be interested in. And it sounds an awful lot like 
what's happening there is that Cameron Ortiz is tipping off Vincent Ramos to the fact that he's under investigation uh, and offering to tell him more about what the FBI and the RCMP know about his operations. That does seem to have been the genesis of this. This seems to be the way that they got onto uh, Cameron Ortiz. But another thing that really stands out is that <coughs> although the investigation began fairly recently, uh, it goes back in time to at least 2015. And in fact, we've seen documents referenced from the, uh, the search of of Mr. Ortiz's uh, apartment and computer and so on that talk about uh, documents going back as early as 2013. So uh, you can tell from listening to Brenda Lucky, although she didn't want to get into the details of the investigation, she was stressing how preliminary it is. They're still assessing the damage. It appears that the, the government doesn't yet have a full grasp of the content of the information communicated by Cameron Ortiz, nor does it necessarily know who he gave it all to. Uh, certainly they don't feel confident in saying he, he leaked these secrets only and that's and we know that that's where the damage ends and if you don't know where the damage ends how far the damage reaches mm -hmm. you're kind of required in the intelligence business to err on the side of caution so if Cameron Ortiz is aware of Operation X let's say involving some ally uh, and the government of Canada can't establish whether he communicated that information to anyone else it's kind of required to assume that he might have and the ally in turn is required to assume that that Operation X might now be compromised and this is why uh, in the report that our colleague Catherine Tunney obtained yesterday uh, we see the government talking about possible loss of intelligence sources where other countries might have to dump intelligence assets which could have been potentially contaminated uh, even though they know that very likely that wasn't the case the danger is that it, that it could have happened uh, and we spoke with the deputy commissioner of the RCMP today, uh, P.Y. Bourdois, who was saying that that could include putting people's lives at risk. So you mm -hmm. might have to pull out agents uh, for those reasons. So what it shows is that because of that precautionary principle uh, that's going to have to operate in this case, that if the damage can't be nailed down, if the government doesn't really clearly understand how much was communicated, it's going to have to make... Uh, some <coughs> assumptions that could affect a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of allies, and that will inevitably annoy them. But, of course, one must also remember that we're talking about allies like the United States who've had their own issues, and one need only think about people like Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, and so on, uh, and other agents going back to Aldridge Ames. Uh, you know, this does happen. What becomes a problem is when it becomes a pattern. We've now mm -hmm. seen two fairly high-profile cases that did have repercussions for allies, the other one, of course, being the Delisle case. Uh, it's, it would be interesting to understand, to get a sense of how much frustration those allies really feel. Are they being as patient as it seems, or, or are they really frustrated? So, so far, uh, Brenda Lucky, the commissioner, said we haven't had any restrictions domestically or with allies. Maximum right. resources are being put into this. All hands are on a deck. Uh, yep. But we are, risk, we are aware of the potential risk in Canada and abroad because yep. this was is, was, uh, Director General of National Intelligence Coordination Centers. So this is a top-level RCMP official facing a number of, yep. of charges, right, that did have access to Canadian intelligence as well as international con intelligence, I believe, connected to the so-called Five Eyes, which are those, the, the, the major English-speaking uh, countries in the world, right? So right. just let's step back a little bit, Evan, and remind us who is Cameron Ortis mm -hmm. uh, and what it is that he is facing. <laughs> well, uh, as Director General of the National Intelligence Coordinators Coordination Center, he's one of the last people you would want to go rogue. He's also one of the last people you would expect to behave in this way. He has uh, a lifetime security clearance at the very top level. He's handling the most sensitive uh, kind of secrets. The report that we saw yesterday, that we, CBC News obtained yesterday, talks about uh, things that go to the core of the security and sovereignty of Canada as a nation. So. Uh, that was the language that the communication security establishment was using to describe this, talking about potentially devastating consequences from, from this breach. So he's exactly the kind of person that you wouldn't want to do this. And it, it, it is very surprising, too, I think, uh, when you look at some of the initial allegations against him, that this is not a, a, an allegation of a person who was passively recruited by, say, a foreign country, someone who, because they had some compromising personal situation or, or debt, was approached and re reluctantly began to work for some. This is, a, on the contrary, an allegation that Cameron Ortiz was out there shopping his services around, that mm -hmm. he himself was proactively seeking to betray the RCMP and, and, and by extension, his country. Uh, so it's, it's, for that reason, I think we heard Brenda Lucky using the phrase extremely unsettling. It makes people doubt uh, individuals, because if an individual like that is going to behave in this way, then, then 
who else could potentially do something similar and what positions do they occupy? What secrets do they have? It's, it, it is troubling indeed. All right, Evan, thank you. That is the CBC's Evan Dyer, live in Ottawa.